anxiety or schizophrenia. What now? Mental health challenges are often accompanied with other concerns, housing issues, employment struggles, educational setbacks. There are new forms for insurance, and with it, you or your loved one could have a feeling of isolation, a feeling of aloneness that mental health issues can sometimes bring. The good news is you're not alone. Mental health issues are very, very common. One in five Americans experience a mental health illness. And people in our community of Falmouth have a particular reason for pride, the Fair Winds Clubhouse. So here with me today is the program director for Fair Winds Clubhouse, Jerry McDowell, Hillary Andrews, the employment and recruitment coordinator, and two very successful club members, Dana Galileo and Bonnie Milroy. Jerry, you are the program director, so I'd like to start with you, if you could. Can you tell us about the Fairwinds Clubhouse? Fairwinds Clubhouse is part of Fellowship Health Resources. Uh, FHR supports individuals with mental illnesses and provides services for 7,000 people across seven states. Fairwinds Clubhouse is one of the programs that FHR offers. The Clubhouse model is based on uh, Clubhouse International who establishes standards which every cl clubhouse operates. Um, we have uh, 37 standards that we talk about. Uh, we talk about one every day so that every clubhouse in the entire world abides by the same standards. Uh, Fairwinds Clubhouse is located right on 155 Catherine Lee Bates Road. Uh, the clubhouse model is designed to uh, eliminate that social and economic isolation that you referred to earlier. Uh, we believe that meaningful engagement, uh, activity, pr productivity is vital in uh, recovery. And what Fairwinds Clubhouse does is offer an opportunity for people with mental illnesses who are managing those illnesses to work on their recovery. So we need individuals who are invested in their recovery and we're going to provide an opportunity for them to become employed, become productive, learn how to work with other people and minimize that social and economic isolation that they're dealing with. And how many members do you have? We have 50 members uh, and we'll have probably 25 to 30 that come through the clubhouse on a daily basis. Some members will come every day we have some members that come two or three times a day. Many of our members are employed. So besides the employment part of it, they may come in for a part of the day, maybe two or three times a week. So any time that people are within the clubhouse, we believe that the structure of the clubhouse provides an environment for them to be productive. Every aspect of the clubhouse is staff and member working side by side to make it happen. So everything that we do in the clubhouse the members are involved with. So setting up an arrangement like this, uh, providing an opportunity for us to talk about fair wins, the members are involved. Uh, a big part of this came about because of a call that Dana Galileo made to, to this station. That's part of the reason that we're here right now. Well, thank you, so, Dana. Yeah, so thank you, Dana, <laughs> for that. You're welcome. Uh, so you know, what we want to try and do is identify opportunities in the, com in the community for people to become employed, and we'll let Hillary address that. Yeah, and before we get to that, you have something called a scheduled work day, is that right? Or a, an ordered work day? Yes, yes. It's called a work order day. Work order day. So all of the tasks that we have in the clubhouse are set up uh, so that we can assign or actually so members can volunteer to participate in certain tasks during the day. They may be, for instance, we have two units in our clubhouse. Okay. We have a culinary unit and we have our employment unit. So if a member is involved in the employment unit, every day they'll meet with Hillary and another unit coordinator, Sean, and they'll discuss the tasks of the day. It may be working with somebody on a personal goal. Maybe that personal goal might be developing or refining their resume. It may be identifying employment opportunities in the community. So each unit will meet as a group twice a day, sit around a table, work together to discuss what needs to be done, address the plan for how to get that accomplished, and assign those tasks in the morning. And then in the afternoon, we'll meet again and see how we did. 
So we're trying to you know, get people to work as, as, te as a team, you know, work together to get something done, but everything that they do is geared towards the operation of the clubhouse. So individuals in the culinary unit are involved in every aspect of preparing lunch every day. They'll be involved in the menu planning. Uh, Dana is a member of the culinary unit. They'll be involved in the menu planning for the month. They'll be involved in the shopping, the actual meal preparation, serving, clean up every aspect of the operation. Same thing applies to the cafe. So the work order day is designed to allow an opportunity for people to be productive. That's really what we're trying to do. We want people to become productive members of the clubhouse and also productive members in our society, in our community, through employment, working with others, and learning the values that, uh, that are key to uh, you know, being successful in, in any job that they may encounter. And you also have a, a studio art program, is that right? Them? Yes, Studio 35 is part of uh, FHR's um, mission to incorporate the arts into recovery. Okay. Uh, we have several members, you know, it might be art, it might be writing, it might be music, but, you know, part of the reason that we believe uh, our WAVE, the WAVE is our newsletter, right. is so vital is because it allows the opportunity for uh, individuals to express themselves in writing, uh, and do something that they really want to do. You know, it may be talking about a trip that they went on, it may be about an employment experience, but you know, we believe that the arts are, are key to recovery, whether it's, like I said, drawing, uh, painting, uh, gardening, anything that's, you know, that involves uh, you know, things that any, anyone else would do as far as, far as therapy is concerned. Your self-expression is so important. Right. Right? And if we think about the magnitude of the problem, um, can you talk a little bit about how common you really find it is and um, what kinds of things you help you help people with their GED sometimes there's educational setbacks yeah we have you know an educational component we do uh, offer G the, a GED program uh, we have several members that are involved in that oh, that's great. Uh, you know if if someone has taken courses and they're interested in continuing their education then we're going to provide them the support you know we'll get them over to Cape Cod Community College and you know, meet with an advisor and address their individual issues, what they've accomplished, what they need to do next to get to where they want to be. So you know, we're going to provide them with the support uh, as far as education is concerned, as far as employment is concerned, uh, whatever they need. And every individual is different. I think that you know, when you look at our clubhouse, that the relationships that the members have with the staff is key to what we accomplish. Uh, it doesn't happen without uh, the positive relationships, just like any team. You know, you, the team needs to work together to be successful, and our members uh, communicate very well with our staff. Uh, I have three staff. One is in charge of the culinary unit, and we have two people that work. Uh, Sean works along with Hillary in the employment and uh, membership unit. So yeah. that is uh, you know, a vital part of, of what we do. Oh. Any individual that comes in the door will be able to communicate with at least a, at least one staff person, but preferably all of us, to get to know what the clubhouse offers, how they can become involved in uh, what might interest them in the clubhouse. And so a very important part of that staff, Hillary, you are in charge of employment and recruitment. And that employment is so key to becoming a person who feels like they have purpose, getting some work skills going. Can you talk about that part of the job? Yes, I, I agree that that is uh, probably one of the biggest parts to recovery, uh, finding something meaningful that you can get up and do every day. So uh, a big thing that I get the chance to help with is finding employment. So whether it's getting your resume ready, uh, just thinking about and putting down what kinds of jobs you've done before. Um, so I, I really enjoy that part of the job, as well as uh, finding new members. So uh, one of the biggest parts I've heard from employers about you know, why they enjoy working with Fairwinds Clubhouse is because they get uh, an employee that really wants to come to work. I've heard people say, you know, I have plenty of employees, but you know, maybe they don't feel like showing up today. They don't take pride in their job. 
and everybody from our clubhouse that we help find employment wants to work. So I think that's one of the biggest parts of it, uh, along with you know their tax benefits from hiring members of Fairwinds Clubhouse and just having somebody that already has support if they have a problem at work right. is very beneficial as well. I think that's amazing that you, so if someone in the community wants to hire somebody, you're going to train them, is that right? So we have three different, uh, I guess, levels of employment. Uh, Dana will be a good example of independent employment. He found his job, he does it on his own, and you know he really enjoys uh, being independent with that part of his life, which is amazing. Uh, we have supported employment, which is where uh, we offer whatever kinds of support the member wants. So if they want us to help them find a job, we can start looking. If they want us to come talk to their boss about something that has been bothering them or something maybe they're interested in uh, getting some more responsibilities at work, it's up to, to the employer and the employee as to how much support we would provide. And then the last one is transitional employment, which is the one where we would learn the job first and then we would train the member. And if they can't be at work because they're sick one day, one of our staff members would go cover and do their job for them. That's an amazing benefit actually for an employer. Yes. Really, yeah. So there's the tax benefits for it. They probably don't pay benefits, am I right? That's all already taken care Correct, of? Correct, yes. Uh, most of our positions are part-time, mm -hmm. so the employers wouldn't provide any benefits. Uh, so about 20 hours wise. a week, maybe, yes. something like that. Fabulous, fabulous. And so one of your independent workers is Dana. And Dana, can you tell us about your jobs and what you like about Fairwinds Club? Well, I love Fairwinds Clubhouse. They've done so much for me. They've helped me along. They helped me get a long way in life. I started working at the 4170 restaurant in Woods Hole last year. Okay. And it was a seasonal job, and I worked again there this year. And I they really had you enjoyed. back, so you must yes. be a good worker. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I washed dishes there. Okay. I used to be a cook and a chef. It's a, long a fabulous time ago. restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, Christopher's. And you're so independent, you actually live in the Fairwinds Apartments, which Jerry I actually did want to cover with you. Can you talk about the apartments that are? Yes, our advisory board is uh, the Friends of Fairwinds. We're very fortunate to have them. Uh, they are a group of people in the Falmouth community uh, who uh, believe in the mission of Fairwinds Clubhouse. Yeah. Um, the president of the board is Linda Clark. Uh, and she's assisted by Linda Zammer, uh, you know, two members of the community who I'm sure a lot of people are aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, and they actually came together several years ago and came up with the idea of building a, an apartment complex for Fairwinds Clubhouse members. So right across from our parking lot, there is a four-unit uh, micro apartments, they're called. Uh, and we have four members living there. Uh, and what we do is we try and provide the opportunity for people that are deserving, you know, that have, you know, they're valuable, active members in the clubhouse, uh, they're employed or on the path towards employment, uh, and, you know, they, they've earned it. You know, they've earned the opportunity to live there, and Dana certainly has done that. So the idea is to provide that opportunity, and then as they become more independent, you know, for them to, to move on. So the Fairwinds Club, uh, Fair, the Friends of Fairwinds supported, I mean, that's a, it was a major venture. Uh, the apartments just opened up in January. Uh, you know, we're really excited about them. And, uh, you know, it's part of the reason that Dana's always at work before I'm there. Uh, I get to our friends, awesome. I get to the clubhouse, and Dana's waiting for me to get in, you know, to get started on that, on that work order day. Uh, the Friends of Fairwinds also supports our, uh, our social programs. Yes. For instance, if we want to do a, a, a trip on a weekend, uh, we've done trips to Provincetown, uh, to thrift shops, uh, shopping trips we've got coming up. Uh, then I have you know, staff that support those trips, uh, that join members on those trips, and the Friends of Fairwind supports, uh, you know, supports us financially. So you know, it's, a very val it's a great situation. We have a great relationship with them. Uh, we're fortunate to have them. Uh, they believe in the mission. 
You know, and uh, what we're looking for is more people in the Falmouth community that, uh, that believe in our mission, you know, once they learn more about us, yes. and can support us through providing opportunities for employment, through providing, um, you know, leads towards individuals. You know, we know there are individuals out there who are struggling with mental illness, yes. not really sure how to manage it. They need support. And sometimes just getting into the door is the most important, is, is the most difficult thing. Then once they get into the door and they say, okay, I can become involved and be productive like these other members in the clubhouse. And then who knows what happens as a result of that. Because I can look at members right now in the clubhouse who are working 20 hours a week who seven or eight years ago, I may not have imagined that. So the progress that we see, sometimes it's more than, you know, more than a year, but it's the gradual proce process that we're looking for. And if individuals are productive in the work order day at Fairwinds Clubhouse, then that's the beginning. You know, and then it's up to them to really you know, find out what they're capable of and continue to work towards becoming more and more productive. And uh, you know, like I said, eliminating you know, that isolation that they experienced before they became a part of Feelings Club. I think it's great, and I think that the, uh, you give tours, that people are welcome to come in and take mm -hmm. a look around. I took a look yeah. around. I saw your kitchen. I didn't want to leave. The food is delicious. You have lunch every day. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And Dana, you worked in the cafe. I think we have some pictures of you working in the cafe, yes. right? You have yes. A, is, can you tell me about your typical day when you come in at 8 o'clock, what you do? Well, I get the coffee ready because the members like their coffee. I we get all like the, uh, yes, they do. I get the uh, English muffins ready to go, the butter, the peanut butter. They like butter and peanut butter on the English muffins. Bonnie likes butter. See, he's got everybody's menu in his head. Yeah. I do. I know everybody <laughs> likes great. the coffee, too. And you're not working right now, is that right? No, I'm not. The job ended last Sunday. Okay. They closed for the season. Taking a little rest right now. Mm hmm That's fabulous. And you've gone on some of the trips. I think we have pictures of the trips, right? I've gone on a few of the trips, but I've been working mostly weekends, so I haven't been able to go too many of them, but I'm going in the future ones. Okay. How often do they have trips? Bonnie, can you talk about that? Uh, the trips usually are like, um, Hillary, correct me if I'm wrong, like two salaries a month, and mm -hmm. like probably like one or two days out of the month during the weekdays, if they're mostly educational trips during the weekdays. And the social trips on Saturdays are usually like fun trips, like shopping trips or going to the movies, miniature golf. Um, so you went uh, to the WIDA, the Heritage, yep. there's been Red Sox games, is that right? Correct. Mm -hmm. And do you all, tr do you have a bus that you all travel in or? We have two vans. Okay, great, yep. great. And what was your favorite trip that you did? Uh, this summer it was probably Heritage Plantation. It brought back a lot of memories for me because I grew up in Sandwich. Oh. And my first job as a teenager was running the carousel at 16 years old. Hmm. Now, you wrote in, they have a newsletter yes. that Jerry mentioned, and that's called The Wave. Yes, it is. And you wrote in this month's edition, I mm -hmm. think, and you talked about your mom and how happy you were that she'd done a lot to help you. Exactly. Can you talk about what it was like before the club and after? Um, when I was first diagnosed, I was frustrated. Like, who wouldn't be frustrated when you walk out of, as you said, walk out of a doctor's office saying, here you go. You have a mental illness. Yeah. And I was diagnosed, and I'm not ashamed to admit this, with um, bipolar depression. Uh -huh. And I'm in my 40s right now, and I was diagnosed in my late 20s. And I was afraid to tell my mother in the beginning because I just lost my father the year before that. So it was kind of difficult. And I had no place to turn. So you got to the club. Got to the club. And I didn't want to leave. But I did leave for a while because I moved to Hyannis yeah. and joined another clubhouse like Fairwinds. Uh -huh. But Hyannis and I, after a long time, did not get along that well. Uh -huh. So I moved back to Falmouth. What do you like about the clubhouse? I like about the clubhouse... Um, Is it the social? The Is it the friends? The friendships. Um, you know, it's like meeting people that like you're not alone. Like, you're not... Like, you, like, you're like hey, I have bipolar. Yes. I might meet somebody else that suffers the same thing I do, but at the same time, I might not understand what they're going through. They might not understand what I'm going through. We can develop a friendship with it. 
Yeah. Instead of like yeah. isolating yourself. Yeah, it's so important. So I want I just want to um really emphasize that mm -hmm. that clubhouse part it's actually in the name the, the having a friend and meeting people mm -hmm. and working together on a common project um, Jerry is there anything you want to just as we sum it up is there anything you want to talk about that we haven't hit upon yet I think that just like any any uh, group any uh, team or club or organization uh, you know the fiber of that organization kind of depends on you know great so greatly on the people uh, so I think that we have great people in our clubhouse. I think that, you know, everybody, staff and members, I mean, understands that, you know, we can do something about people with mental illness. We can help them. You know, we can help them on their road to recovery. So, you know, and, and, and every individual in the clubhouse believes that. So it's not just the staff that's encouraging it. You know, it's our whole membership and staff doing it together. We start off our day with a morning meeting every morning. And you know, part of the work order day is to have a morning meeting and address what's going to happen that day. And we always talk about um, you know an expression of gratitude. You know, we think that it's important to give. It's not all about us. You know, people looking out for us. We think it's important to give. Um, last year we had uh, eight people ring the bell for the Salvation Army. You know, it's competitive employment. You know, they're getting paid. They're getting up. There's a purpose for their day raised close to eight thousand dollars for the Salvation Army. Wow. So we believe that, you know, it's not just, you know, people looking out and doing something for Fairwinds Clubhouse. We believe that Fairwinds Clubhouse is doing for the community. You know, and what we're trying to do is to help the individuals in the community become more a part of it by working, by being part of the clubhouse, by being productive. And we believe that that's going to help their self esteem, their value, so it's the values that we're teaching, you know, through employment. And we're encouraging people that, yeah, you can do something about recovery. You know, okay. look at what's happened with Dana. Look at what ha what's happened with Bonnie. Look at who's working competitively that, you know, seven years ago you may not have imagined that they could be doing this. So, you know, we believe in our purpose. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we believe that we have a great space to operate. We have the support of Friends of Fairwinds and Fellowship Health Resources. FHR is committed to behavioral health on a, on a national level. So uh, that's our purpose. You know, we do the best we can every day and uh, try and make a difference you know, one by one. I think it's a beautiful story, and I think that if there's any employer out there who thinks they might have a great fit, they have some 20-hour-a-week job or maybe less, or, they want something uh, where they don't have to work too hard to train the person. They have an enthusiastic worker who really wants to get some, some work done. Uh, I think it's great if somebody out there thinks, gee, I think I have a job in that, in that, that would fit somebody. Or if you have a loved one struggling with mental illness, uh, to take a tour of Fairwinds, and I think you'll be amazed. I was really impressed. And... Um, yeah, I think you have a great message. So that's it for Solutions this week, and we hope you all have uh, continue to look for solutions in the community. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.